Come on, can we give God praise today? He's doing so much in our church. And service has been incredible already. It's a privilege to worship with you and everybody watching online in a couple of our campuses. Apple Valley, can we welcome everybody that's joining with us right now? We love you. And in just a moment, we're going to the book of John, chapter 1. Uh, but the last couple of weeks in our church has been amazing. Pastor Rob, two weeks ago, preached a message based on a testimony of somebody, somebody's life change that is in our church. Her name's Amber. Just encourage you to go back and watch the last two weeks' messages. That message was called, What If the Christians Are Right? She was contemplating really difficult and challenging things and, and, and contemplating, is life worth living? And she thought this thought, what if the Christians are right? And last week, Pastor Rob taught uh, about what it's like to be on earth going through a lot of pain and suffering. It's, it's like a living hell in the midst of that pain and teaching also that there is an eternity, that there is a heaven and there is a hell, and this is a progression on the last two weeks. What is our response as a church? When we hear about that eternity, and when we hear about people suffering, for those of us in Christ, what's our response? There should be an urgency to invite people to the family of God, an urgency to invite people to the church of Jesus Christ. It's our response. It's not an option for us to just sit around and enjoy the goodness of God in and of ourselves. But while we're on this earth, until we breathe our last breath, it's our job to bring as many people to faith in Jesus Christ as possible. It's the power of an invite. That's what we're talking about this weekend. In John chapter 1, verses 35 through 42, we're going to read that together. And if you remember, John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. John the Baptist was, was preparing the way for the Lord, making a way. He was the forerunner for the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And, and he had, uh, as he was leading his ministry, and we see the baptism of Jesus that John the Baptist did, and it's awesome. Uh, it's an amazing thing. John had these followers. He had his own disciples. And as he was with his disciples one day, this is what we're about to read, Jesus walked past. And let's read this together. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus, his cousin, as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. They just left John. We're out. We're following that guy. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see an invitation. So they came and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour or 4 p.m. One of the two uh, who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. This was Andrew's response after meeting the Messiah after meeting Jesus. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at Simon and said, you are Simon, son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. And he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter, and Philip's response, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to, to Jesus, how do you know me? And Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael said, answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, because I said to you that I saw you sitting under a fig tree, you believe you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened 
and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The title of this message is The Power of an Invite. Let's pray one more time as we go. Lord, we thank you for your presence here today. And I pray that you would do a new work in my life. I pray that you would do a new work in our church. A greater sense of urgency as as we see what is happening in people's lives, even a part of our church, there's suffering, there's hurting in our neighbors and our coworkers and the people that we meet from here to there. As we see what's happening around our world, I pray that we, the church of Jesus Christ, would have an urgency to make an introduction, to say, come and see, to invite everyone we know to be a part of the family of God. Do a new work in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the church would see revival again because there is a spirit-filled church that is willing to invite. I pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. amen. I am sick of seeing ads. Okay? We're just gonna go here for a second. Uh, I got, got a couple daughters, and every once in a while, they'll, they'll uh, get my phone or my iPad, and they'll say, hey, Dad, could we download a new game? And so they got, you know, these looking for like a kid-friendly game, and, and every game that is downloadable these days, you play for five seconds, and you got to sit through five minutes of ads. It's sickening what's happening in this world today. I mean, this is crazy. Ad after ad after ad. You go to find out what's happening in our world. You're, you're looking for the news. You go to any website. It's like, it's like, is this, like, I can't even read the story because in between paragraphs of the story is ad after ad after ad. I got to click out of it because there's, it's like, it's promoting things that I don't need. Like, I don't need a cold plunge right now. I got no business making sourdough. Why am I seeing sourdough ads? What's happening? There's ad after ad after ad. Everybody is trying to invite you to buy this, watch this, do this, go there. Everybody, what is an ad? It's an invitation to things that are just going to distract us, things that are going to force us to continue to be a consumer We think it's going to fulfill us and we get this new toy or this new thing or we experience this thing and it's, it's, it's here today and it's fun in the moment and then it's gone. It does not fulfill. Everything is an invitation. Man, you try to make a recipe these days and it's like (laughs) about a thousand ads just in a recipe. You ask somebody, Hey, where'd you get those shoes? An influencer. I mean, I mean, Everybody is inviting. How much more should the church of Jesus Christ be inviting? How much more? The thing that satisfies, the thing that fulfills, he who can heal, he can, who can forgive, he who can deliver, how much more? We have the answer. Raise your hand here and at every campus if your life has been totally changed by Jesus Christ. Come on. We've got the answer. How much more? We'll walk every day. The, the average person will see anywhere from 4,000 to 10,000 ads a day. You don't believe it. No, I don't think it's me. Yeah, it is everywhere. And how much more we who have Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we should be inviting everybody we know. That's what we're talking about. Luke chapter 14, verse 23, talks about this banquet. And there was this invitation list. And, and everybody was given an excuse about why they couldn't be at the banquet. They had an excuse. This reason and that reason for not being able to be at the banquet. And the master's like getting frustrated. Like, why can nobody come to the banquet? And then he tells some of his servants, like, this is what you need to do. Verse 23, and the master said to the servant, go out to the highways 
and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. Our God desires that his house may be filled. We've got a job to do. There's a banquet table and it's not just in eternity, but we get to worship together as the church every single week and we should be inviting people. If you remember the message a few weeks back, we're not called to be rolling stones, bricks out on our own, but to be built into a spiritual house and worshiping together. We should invite people to this banquet. How good was our worship time and singing to the Lord in this service? It's incredible to sit in the presence of God. How much more should we say, come in, come and see what the Lord has done. He's done it in my life. He's done it in this person's life, in this person's life. In just a few moments, we're going to share a, a testimony of something that God has done in a family's life, a part of our church. Compel people to come in. It's the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and then we're going to talk about the story from John 1. Jesus came to them all. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore... Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is our job, to invite people to the table, to invite people to the family of God, to invite people to this church. Charles Spurgeon says this, Do you want to go to heaven alone? I fear you'll never go there. Have you no wish for others to be saved? Then you are not saved yourself. Be sure of that. Going back to this story, John the Baptist, he's ready to make an invitation. He's ready to make an introduction. He's got his disciples and he's like, behold the Lamb of God. And his disciples split. They say, John the Baptist has been great. We're going to follow the Messiah. I don't know if, you know, the, the narrative doesn't tell us like if John knew that they were going to leave, but John was prepared to make the introduction. Are you prepared to make an introduction of somebody in your life to say, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know what he can do in your life? Do you know? And are you willing? This is uh, just, just real quick. You know, sometimes it, uh, it feels good to be the person that has the answer. And so we have this natural propensity to want to be the middleman. And John, he, like, no, no, no stay, stay with me. Like, I, I know Jesus, so stay with me. But he doesn't do that. It takes intentionality and great humility to say it's not about following me. I'm not building the kingdom of John the Baptist. And, and we should not be building our kingdom. Man, when I'm raising my kids, I can't wait for the day that I find out about a need that's already been met in their life. Why? Because they didn't call me, but they went to Jesus first. Are you prepared to make an introduction and to not be the middleman Knowing that a disciple of Jesus Christ, I don't need to go to the priest. I don't need to go to the pastor. I don't need to go to the, the, the follower of Jesus. I can go to Jesus himself. Are you willing and are you ready to be intentional and humble and say, I'm not building my own kingdom. I want to introduce people to the solution. John the Baptist was ready. Here's the first point. You know, Andrew meets Jesus, and it says that he first found his own brother, Simon. You are invited to invite. You're invited to invite. One day we'll be in heaven. We'll just be celebrating. It's going to be awesome. But on this earth, you have been invited to the family of God to go invite other people to the family of God. And Andrew, what does he do first? He first goes to his brother, his family. You're invited to invite your family. As a pastor, I have an opportunity to pray over people. And a lot of times people are praying for their loved ones and their family members that need to know Christ. And there's been many conversations that I've had with people saying, what if you're the answer? What if, what if you're the invite that's waiting to happen? Have you invited them to church? Have you had a conversation with them about faith? What if you're the answer? Think right now, just even in the middle of this message, think about your family that does not know Jesus. Think about your parents, your grandparents, your uncles, your cousins, your siblings, your children. You're invited to invite your family. The Spirit of God is saying, invite your family. Invite your family. Bring it up. 
God's changed your life. And what if you are that missing link? Oh, I've tried before. Try again. Try again. Try again. With love and with truth, you're invited to invite your family. I love that Andrew goes straight to Peter. Who in your family needs the invite? Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise of salvation is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself. This message is not just for you and not just for me and not those who are found, but it's for every single person. And you need to grab onto that. Some parent right now, parent needs to grab onto that right now, saying, this is not just for me, this is for my children. I'm praying for my children. Lord, I pray right now for every prodigal that is lost, every prodigal that has run, every prodigal that has gone astray, Every single child right now that does not know you in the saving faith that's been delivered, that's been set free, that's been forgiven, that's been made new as a new creation, I pray that you would draw them to yourself. I pray that you would save them. And I pray that you would use the family members through a simple invitation, come and see. Come and see. And I pray that you would soften hearts And I pray that there would be a revival of children coming to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That they would come to know you. That this would be a a, a faith that goes generation to generation. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So then Jesus, he he meets Philip. And then Philip, what does he do? He goes to make an invitation to a friend. He knows Nathaniel and he goes immediately. Isn't it awesome? Jesus didn't say, hey, go get your friends. They just did it. So enthusiastic about their faith. So enthusiastic about meeting the Messiah and what God does. And I'm I'm praying that this message would compel you right now to get more enthusiastic that God is still changing lives. Do you remember what he did in Amber's life? Two weeks ago we watched this video. God's still doing it. And there would be an urgency in this faith and this boldness to just, I, 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 I gotta say, come and see. They invite, Andrew invites Peter, and he lets Jesus do the rest. Philip invites Nathaniel, and he lets Jesus do the rest. When Jesus meets uh, Peter, he changes his name, gives him a new identity. When Jesus meets Nathaniel, he says, I see you, and I've seen you for a long time. And Nathaniel goes, how did you know me? And Jesus is like, you believe just because of that? You are now going to see much greater things. And this is what God does. Like to help us build faith for the invite is is to realize that when you invite your family and when you invite your friends, they're going to come. Let Jesus do the rest. Let Jesus do the rest. Watch God change somebody's identity as now a child of God as a man or woman of God, with a purpose, with a hope, with a future. Watch God totally transform. It's the greatest thing. Like, if, if, if you're stuck in a rut of just, you know, I do, I do the church thing, and I go, and we, you know, we're, you know, we're checking the boxes, and I just, I'm not feeling it, and, you know, I just, I'm just kind of just, you know, I'm just doing it. You want to get out of that? Start inviting people. Because when you watch somebody that you know come into this place and get rocked by the power of the Holy Spirit, totally transform, new identity in Christ. And all of a sudden, they're inviting more people than you. It's like, like, like they're, they're just, out, like I've been totally, nobody could ever talk me out of it. I've been changed by Jesus Christ. It's amazing how that invigorates us, those that made the invite in the first place. All of a sudden, like, man, I, I hope they pick a good set list this week. Man, I hope, I, I hope it's a good message this week. Man, I hope they give an altar call this week. I, man, I hope, I hope God changes their life this week. And, and all of a sudden, we're reinvigorated with this gathering of the saints where we glorify the Lord and we see lost souls get saved. New identity and also seen. I, lo- I love that. Nathaniel, he just was so moved by the fact that Jesus saw him sitting under a fig tree. It doesn't even take a prophetic thing. Like, it's like, yep, I saw, yep, I saw you. But there's people in need right now that need to, need to know. Pastor Rob talked about it last week. Living hell. And they're walking, they're walking and they're experiencing suffering. And they're, they feel like they're in a living hell. And they're just, does anybody see me? 
And when you invite that person, that friend, and they come into the house of God, and they feel the presence of God, they feel seen by God. And that, that, that does something to a person. We see it in Nathaniel. But man, I was lonely. I, was on my, I didn't know if anybody cared. I didn't know if anybody knew me. I didn't, I, and I, as soon as I felt the presence of God, I knew that he knew me, and he loved me, and he was for me, and he had more for me. And they start to get a vision. Like Nathaniel, you'll see greater things. And your friends that come into the presence of God, they start to get a vision for their life. They'll see greater things. They're going to see greater things. And God is able to heal and restore and to do a new work. You are invited to invite your family. You're invited to invite your friends. I'd love to introduce some friends that are a part of our church where they could share their story. They, they were invited by somebody a part of our church. They were invited and they showed up. Can we welcome right now Ryan and Melissa Van Wy? Come on up. I love it. Isn't it so fun? You don't even know them. Some of you do, but you don't even know them. We're clapping. Like, this is the family of God. Like, why wouldn't you want to invite your family and friends to this environment? So celebratory. It's awesome. But Ryan and Melissa uh, are, are great friends. Ryan used to intern here at River Valley. And I've, I've been able to see, like, from a front row seat, God totally transform Ryan's life, their marriage, their parenting, their family. And uh, would love for you to share a little bit of your testimony. Ryan, where were you before coming to River Valley and before uh, giving your life to Jesus? I guess the easiest way to describe it, I was a soldier for Satan. I acted out his will and his way throughout life. Uh, at an early age, I partied hard. I was uh, into all the, the wild stuff. I was a pretty wild man. Um, chased the job status, chased the finances, chased everything that, that the enemy said that's going to make me happy and successful, and that's what you need. I chased that stuff, never was ever fulfilled with it, um, and it just leads to worse. More alcohol, more partying. Um, and then I got involved uh, with a group of like-minded men um, that uh, liked to party just as much as I did, if not more. Uh, rode motorcycles. What more could I ask for? I'm in I'm in heaven. And uh, this was a very violent lifestyle, and it took me to a new level of, of just chaos. I mean, there's times when Melissa would pick me up, you know, from the bars at 3 a.m. Um, cops would be knocking at our doors looking for us. Um, and it just, it, I, and I, I was good. I was really good at being a, a soldier for Satan. Um, but all that violence and everything kind of took me to a point of, uh, I lost my job. I lost the job that the enemy had given me, you know, to, to make all that money. I blew our finances out the water because I was trying to live a lifestyle that just uh, that wasn't healthy. Um, and we got to the point where we just, we needed to make a change. And so we, we left North Dakota, we come down to Minneapolis, and then that's when the, the steal, kill, and destroy the enemy took over. Um, and he took all that stuff from me. He took my job, left my brothers behind, and I hit severe depression. And then that's when the enemy started saying, now it's time to kill, kill yourself. And it was just th those comments of in my head of, uh, Ryan, you're a loser. Man, you're just a punk. You're a quitter. You're worthless, Ryan. Kill yourself. Um, and we had about a year and a half of just extreme hell on earth. It was, you know, I mean, I was doing some bad things, but this was a point where I felt I was in hell and I was helpless. So that's, that's where he's coming from. And can I just say that there are Ryans all over our lives, may not be the exact story, but uh, that are living that way and apart from Christ, and let's hear what God has done. How did you find out about River Valley? So when we moved down here, uh, we, did, we didn't, uh, we lived like just a few blocks away, but my sister-in-law, Shauna, uh, invited us to come to River Valley, um, and this time I, I was seeing doctors, therapists, and stuff, you know, and, um, and I, they're all good, but they didn't, they didn't have what I needed, and so she invited us to church. We'd sit up in the nosebleeds, you know, and I, I felt like... Shout out to the nosebleeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, the guy back there, you know, uh, praying for you. And uh, we, uh, so, it, and I could feel that there was, there was like, just a, maybe a sliver of hope. Um, and she actually come to the point in time where it was getting desperate. And the whole invite to church thing, guys, let me tell you, don't stop on the first invite. It might take two, three, four. It might take five invites. Don't give up on them the first time if they don't show up. Because uh, she didn't give up on me. And she eventually ended up emailing you, and you were on a sabbatical. Uh, and I got connected with probably the most amazing human I've ever met. I don't know if he's here, but I got connected to Pastor Greg. Come on, and Pastor Greg, awesome. Yeah. 
It was. So by, by her inviting, we got to church, which got me connected to him, and he invited me to freedom. Um, and that is when I realized what surrender means. That's what I realized. Like my identity was, I was depressed because my identity was so lost from the things that the Satan told me was, was, was mine. And then he took them from me. And I started a foundation brick by brick. It was a lot of work. But because of those people that didn't give up on me and kept the invites coming, um, we found a way. That's amazing. And Melissa, you, you obviously were so strong through all of this and would love for you to share what has God done in Ryan's life since all of this, going to freedom, uh, being a part of this church. Again, I said, you know, Ryan was an intern uh, serving day in and day out. What has God done not only in Ryan's life, but in your, your whole family? Oh, man, talk about a life transformed by Jesus. Uh, he's just, he's so different. I don't recognize our family from five years ago. Like, it's just amazing. Um, he's got a softer tongue, kinder heart, like just a heart on fire for the Lord, and he's leading his family so well, yes. so well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, we live on this earth, so there's still uh, challenges and adversity, but the worship today was just perfect. Like, we have built a firm foundation. Yeah. So instead of turning to anger or alcohol or whatever we did in the past, we turn to Jesus and prayer. So thank God for invitations. Amen. Any, any final words? No, just we're so thankful for River Valley. We're thankful for the people in our lives. And uh, like I said, don't give up. If they say no the first time, keep inviting them. Be obedient to Christ every time, not just the first invite and say it's done. Because if she would have given up on me, I wouldn't be here. One more time, can we thank Ryan and Melissa, a part of our church? Love you guys. Love you. Love you. Love you. Woo God's still changing lives. He's still changing lives. We got an invite. You know, there's a guy named Albert that back in the day, uh, I think in the 30s, he was inviting, he was a 24-year-old farmer. He was inviting a bunch of people to a crusade. And he would fill up his truck. Just anybody that would come, go to a crusade. And he, he had it on his heart, one specific farmer's son. I want to get this guy. And uh, he said, you know, this, this young boy said, no, no thanks, no thanks, no thanks. I'm all good. And so Albert changed his tactic, said, I'll let you drive my truck. I don't know if that was even legal. I'll let you drive my truck full of all these other teenagers, and we're going to go to the crusade. And that young man was like, if I get to drive the truck, I would love to, and had an encounter with God at that crusade. And that young man was Billy Graham. Because Albert was, I'm going to invite him. I'm going to invite him. I'm going to invite him. Our lead pastor, Pastor Rob, gave his life to the Lord at a Billy Graham crusade. Just think, you, you do not know what's on the other side of an invite. I'm praying that we would get lit up with passion and the fire of the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist, we said, I baptize with water, but he who's coming, Jesus Christ, he baptizes with fire with the Holy Spirit and with fire, a passion to see lost people come to Jesus. You're invited to invite your friends. You're invited to invite your family. And let me share this last quick story. You're invited to invite the whole town. There was a woman at the well that had an encounter with Jesus. And she was actually an enemy of the Jewish people. She was in Samaria at the time. And Jesus, it's the longest dialogue that we see in Scripture, just between him and this woman at the well. She has this encounter with the living God, and her response is amazing. John chapter 4, 28 through 30. So the woman left her water jar after the encounter with Jesus. She left it. And went away into the town and said to the people, come, see a man who told me everything that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And they went out of the town and were coming to him. 
verse 39 through 42, many Samaritans were from that town, from that town, believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it's no longer just because of what you said that we believe for we've heard it ourselves. And we know that this indeed is the savior of the world. You're invited to invite your family, to invite your friends and invite the whole town. Who's in your neighborhood that needs to know Jesus? Who's in your workplace that needs to know Jesus? Who are your enemies? The people that agitate you, that need to know Jesus. The next three weeks in our church is a family series, the most easy topic, because people want a healthy family. So we're going to talk about what a healthy family does next week. Week two, we're going to talk about how to raise godly children. Week three is what it looks like to be a family, not just healthy, but on mission. The next three weeks, would you invite the whole town? Who's in your world that needs to know Jesus? Can we stand all across this place here and at every campus? Lord, we thank you that your presence is here. And I pray that we would be stirred up with a passion. An encounter with the living God can change the trajectory of lives generation after generation until Jesus, you return. Lord, I pray that we would be stirred up to invite. I pray that family members would come to know you. I pray that friends would come to know you. I pray that the whole neighborhood would come to know you, Jesus. And you would use River Valley Church to be a light in this world. I believe right now that, God, you are doing a brand new thing in our church, and there is a fire that is being lit in our hearts, a boldness like never before, that we will be relentless to see lives changed, that we would make the introduction, that we would give the invite, and, Jesus, we would let you do the rest. I pray this in Jesus' name, everybody said, amen.